Uh, now, the last time we had this wonderful man uh, on the show, he was sitting on College Green on his own, Jack Elson, chief political correspondent for the Sun newspaper, of course, and there was a man behind him with a sign that said, Jesus forgave you. Um, he now uses that as, a, as his picture on his phone. Jack Elson, good afternoon. Have you got somebody behind you? No. I think, I think, <laughs> pray to God, that we're alone for today. I just really, me, me really want you to know... Brave to sunshine. I really want you to know that if I'd known we were going to you on College Green, I'd have paid somebody some money to walk behind and go, I love Jack Elson, he's really nice. <laughs> How are you, kidder? <laughs> yeah, not bad. I'm still in a bit of a state of shell shock that you're getting on a Ryanair flight, because I'm pretty sure you once told me that you've, uh, you've never turned uh, right on a plane in your life. Uh, it's it's going to be um, an interesting experience. Uh, Mrs. Carl has told me to uh, shut up, not speak, put a hat on, and um, just a way of getting somewhere very quickly. But yes, I knew you were going to bring that up. Um, she said you won't be able to turn left because you'll end up in the in the cockpit. So that'll be fun. Did you hear Ryan, the producer? Did you hear that when he's going to he was going to set up a YouTube channel when he got his air fryer during COVID called Ryan Air Fryers? Rubbish, isn't it? Yeah, heard about the Ryan Air Fryer idea. I think he's probably all right to knock that one on the head. I'm not sure that could be uh, flying off the shelves this Christmas. <laughs> there you Very good. Uh, there you are uh, on College Green on the day that Wes Streeting, who we uh, think is quite competent, the Health Secretary, has announced that unemployed people uh, will be given weight loss jabs under plans to get them back to work. Um, you can understand on this side of the fence, people listening and watching this are slightly appalled by that. Uh, they would say, as I would say, are, are there not better ways of encouraging people to get off their backsides and give something back and look for work? I mean, surely you're not dealing with the problem. It is, it is but a sticking plaster. Still keep a rubbish diet, don't have any exercise, blah, 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 but take that jab and you can give us something back. Why are we not saying to people, make an effort, take responsibility? Is this just a further example, Jack, of the state controlling almost everything? Well, it's definitely a talker, isn't it? And it's definitely going to be controversial. We do know that this Keir Starmer government is pretty interventionist. They're not afraid to be nanny state. Uh, I think that West Streeting is starting from a point that this worklessness crisis is just that. And I think it is actually one of the biggest problems facing Britain at the moment. Uh, you know, it basically all roads, I think, lead to the fact that we have millions of people in some form of out of work benefit, which strangles growth which uh, drains money from the taxpayer. It relies on firms to uh, increase immigration to fill these staffing shortages. So it is obviously a massive issue. And so far, governments have been pretty woeful uh, of all stripes with dealing with it. Um, and so I think we do have to look at some sort of radical ideas. It depends whether or not people are going to get behind this idea of jabs. One stat I saw earlier today shows that when you add the total cost of the NHS of obesity and then the foregone productivity of people with obesity uh, staying at home and not working, it's getting onto about £100 billion pounds every year. So clearly it's a massive issue at the moment. Whether or not people stomach that you are now going to be taxpayer money spending, spending uh, cash on, on jabs for overweight people, uh, I think it remains to be seen. But I do actually think that West Streeting needs to be looking at some sort of radical ideas to solve this problem. Because at the moment, the sort of you know, pretty lame stick and pretty lame carrot approach just isn't really, uh, isn't really working. I mean, I understand what you're saying. We need to do something. But y you just nailed it for me, as you always do. You're saying to people who don't take benefit, who, by the way, aren't minted, here we are, let's get the Labour idea out, you know, we, not everybody who's not on benefits is minted. There are plenty of jams, as I'm always saying to you, people who just about manage, right, who do everything correctly, have never asked for anything, never broken law, blah, 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 play the taxes, go to work, right? They must start thinking, there's no point in living my life in this correct way. You said he needs to do something. But you need to say to people, if you're going to be a nanny state, you need to say this state's not going to wipe your backside unless you give us something back. I've said for months and months on this show, we have all these people come in from abroad because apparently nobody in Britain will do those jobs. They won't what? They, they won't work as hospital porters? Well, I'm really very sorry. If you're not mentally ill and you're not disabled, you're going to have to be forced to do a job you don't like because that's part of what happened in the old days. You didn't just walk into something willy-nilly. You had to go in and prove. And I think that the work... You know I do. I think the benefit system is one of the greatest inventions in the modern world, but it is having the PIWS taken out of it by people who are taking advantage and a society that is too scared, too scared, frankly, to say, no, 
the rest of us aren't going to have this anymore. We will put our hands in our pockets and we will help those who are needy, but we are not going to wipe the backsides of people who are taking the mickey out of us. I think that's really important, Jack. I really do. Yeah, and you know what? It was actually sort of a rare point of unity between both Tories and Labour at the last election. That at the moment, the benefit system isn't being used as a safety net that it should be, but actually has been seen as a lifestyle choice. And that some people uh, do need a hand to get back to work yeah. and plug these staffing shortages which we have in this country. Um, the problem is, is that a lot of governments come in with big plans, they're all talk, they're all getting tough on benefits, you know, it's all about helping people get back to work but then it actually amounts to nothing really. And so we're being promised by Rachel Reeves in this budget there are going to be some tough decisions on welfare. A lot of people are taking from that is that there will be more of a stringent approach to this to try and get people back to work. And even though Labour traditionally has been a bit more, um, a bit more hands off, a bit more laissez faire when it comes to the benefit system, a lot of people who understand this crisis are hoping that Rachel Reeves finally makes inroads with this and actually does make some, uh, some effort to get people back into work. Because as I said earlier, it is one of the biggest drag anchors on the economy. Not just the amount we pay out in benefits, but the foregone productivity of people that could be contributing to the society, but then also the, uh, the strain of basically, and Boris Johnson's talked a lot about this in the past, basically bosses reaching for that lever of cheap overseas immigration, which then itself brings strains on communities and public services. And so it's one big vicious cycle at the moment, and unless you get those army of people who are out of work back into jobs, then you know, you're, you're basically suckered when it comes to trying to trying to get economic growth. One final thing, great to have you on, and you have almost done a whole interview without a man holding a placard behind your back insulting you. Uh, Rachel Reeves, who three years ago insulted the Tories when they were going to uh, rule, uh, they didn't rule out an NI rise. National insurance rise for employers. They talk about growth, this Labour government, but they don't seem to take into consideration that people who set up businesses uh, create growth by employing people and creating general money that seeps down into society. If she's going to do this business is going to get it. Find out their investment summit, but that's anti-business, isn't it? Yeah, totally. It seems to be a complete mess, this national insurance rise. You know, a lot of people in good faith took them on their promise in the election where they said they were not going to raise the, uh, the headline rates of national insurance, income tax or VAT. They're now scrambling around for money and with some verbal gymnastics are saying that actually they only meant employees' contribution to national insurance and not employers. Well, there's a few problems with that. One, why not just say that then during the election rather than sort of trying to get out of it now? But also, as you rightly said, this would actually amount to a tax on workers in the long run because mm. all the evidence points that if you clobber bosses, well, they just pass it on to workers or pass it on to consumers. And so at the end, it's going to be the same people bearing the brunt of this. And I think that's the point that a lot of businesses are imploring uh, Rachel Reeves. Uh, we've only got a few weeks now until the budget. And so... You know, she's under great pressure to try and think again on this. Jack, you're a legend. For me, I want my government to be dealing with the fact that 30 pedos uh, are caught with the most disgusting categories of child abuse pictures are walking free. I want my government to deal with stuff like immigration. I don't want to be told that they're going to give out jabs to people who can't be bothered to do something about it. Jack Elston, thank you very much indeed. Love and College Green for talk.